Hello and welcome back to UIE TV. Please like and subscribe to channel to get further videos directly in your inbox. Belarus opposition rally attracts thousands despite crackdown. Please watch full video report which is showing people and police behaviors. Tens of thousands of people have gathered in Belarus for a rally by the president's election rival, despite an escalating crackdown on the opposition. More than 60,000 people demonstrated in the capital, Minsk, according to one human rights group, Vyazna. The rally was organized by Svetlana Tikhanovskaya, who is standing against the long-term president. Alexander Lukashenko has faced a wave of protests over his bid for a sixth term. Lukashenko has exerted authoritarian control over Belarus in a style reminiscent of the Soviet era since he took office in 1994. Ms. Tikhanovskaya, a political novice, decided to stand for election after her husband was barred from running and jailed earlier this year. Her supporters gathered in a square in Minsk for what the AFP news agency said was the largest opposition protest in the ex-Soviet country in a decade. They waved flags and balloons printed with opposition slogans. People who want a decent life are not criminals, Ms. Tikhanovskaya told the crowd. They are a people, people who want a peaceful change of power. Please don't go against your consciences, don't go against your people, she added. State authorities earlier accused Ms. Tikhanovskaya's husband, Serhii Tsikhanovsky, of collaborating with Russian mercenaries to stoke unrest ahead of the election. The popular opposition blogger faces other charges too. Ms. Tikhanovskaya denied the accusations, which came during an intensifying crackdown on opposition activity. Earlier on Thursday, the authorities arrested 33 suspected mercenaries whom they accused of plotting terrorism. Russia said it was seeking clarification over the arrests and denied knowledge of the Wagner paramilitary group which Belarus suspects of involvement. The secretary of the Belarus Security Council, Andrei Rakow, said investigators suspected as many as 200 Russian mercenaries had entered the country to destabilize the situation during the election campaign. Mr. Rakow said 14 of the detained Russians had fought in Ukraine's Donbas conflict, describing their presence in Belarus as a very unpleasant situation. Reports by UN investigators, the US military and journalists have documented Wagner Group operations in Ukraine, Syria, Libya, Sudan and the Central African Republic. The Russian government denies any links to the group. The Belarus state news agency Belta has named all 33 Russian suspects and given their dates of birth. The state TV channel Belarus One showed the Russians being arrested by the Belarus KGB at a sanatorium. The video report, in Russian, said the group had raised suspicions because of their disciplined, military-style behavior, for example they avoided alcohol. Video footage of the group's arrest showed they had Sudanese currency and a Sudanese phone card with them. The Wagner group is known to be active in Sudan, and there is speculation that it was using Belarus as a transit country for African operations. In Moscow, Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov said on Thursday, We know 33 Russians were detained yesterday in Belarus. 200 are still at large. We do not know of any illegal activity that would be grounds for their detention. He also said there was no such concept as Wagner PMC in Russia. We have dictator as a head of our country. Belarus has been ruled by one man for 26 years now. That was quite sinister. Yeah. But never has his grip on power looked so shaky. We've witnessed hundreds of activists and journalists being arrested and jailed in what people say is the most brutal crackdown they've ever known here. If you see military cars, you need to run. Nothing more, just run. I was just wife and mother. I was absolutely happy with my life. And now I'm going to find out if I will be registered as a candidate to president of our country. Svetlana Tikhanovskaya is a reluctant and unlikely politician. In the run-up to the election, the main opposition candidates have been disqualified and jailed, including her husband. So she's running for president in his place. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm not sure if, you, if uh, I want this congratulations. You know.
She's taking on Alexander Lukashenko, Belarus's first and only president. We have dictator as a head of our country, you know. So we can't uh, say any word against him. Are you afraid? Yes, I am. <laughs> they can do anything. They can take my children to orphanage or something like this. Police is coming. Maybe we are having an illegal meeting here, who knows? Here is forbidden to do anything everywhere, so <laughs> get used to this. Tonight, a protest has been organized to show support for the political prisoners. It's feeling like your government is lying to you every day and it's not possible to live with it no more. We are dangerous for our government just standing in the streets. Dissent so close to an election is not welcome. Police start snatching people at random off the street. Dozens of police officers have just got out and started grabbing people off the street, pulling them out of the protest and throwing them into the van there. Over the last month, hundreds have been arrested and jailed in this way. Opposition to the president is growing. His response to the pandemic has tipped people over the edge. He's dismissed the virus as a psychosis, joking it can be cured by drinking vodka. We head out to a neighborhood which traditionally supports the president and we're surprised by how little goodwill towards him is left. Когда начался коронавирус, а по телевизору тебе он говорит, что все нормально. Здравствуйте, Оля. Это моя соседка. Ой, а что тут такое? Что тут за собрание? Я заболела коронавирусом. Я всю пенсию отдала на таблетки. У меня знакомые поумирали, но они не фиксируют, что это коронавирус. Это за какое-то заболевание. Сука, можно обманывать народ. Я я вот раз думаю. Not a single election since Lukashenko came to power has been judged as free or fair, and very few think that this one is going to be any different. Even reporting on the election is difficult. Who? Police. The mission. And it becomes clear we're being tracked. What was that? Yeah, it's plain clothes. The same guys who usually throw the protesters into the vans. Vola is a well-known activist. Here she is at a bus stop, when suddenly she's picked up and taken away by the KGB. We meet up with her a month later, when she's released from prison. <laughs> В ШИЗО я провела 21 или 22 дня в общей сложности. В обычной камере вода была, только холодная, а вот в ШИЗО воды не было вообще. Мыться не выводили 30 дней. Это часть репрессии. She brings us to a secret location to reunite with a friend, an opposition blogger. Это Вероника Мищенко тоже 30 дней сидела. Да, да, да. Да, нас в один день закрыли. В один день. Veronica is now in hiding. Every night she moves locations. Back at the protests, police cover their faces. They're determined now to clear the streets. If you see military cars, you need to run. Nothing more, just run. Last night we watched people who were protesting against your government be taken off the streets and detained. Is that freedom of speech? 
Ситуация в Европе, которая во многих странах происходит с использованием слезоточивого газа и водометов. Поэтому по поводу реакции на несанкционированное уличное мероприятие, по-моему, в нашей стране она еще не особо жесткая. Belarusians are tired of being afraid. They're ready to fight for change, even if the odds are stacked against them. Do you think you can win? We don't believe in honest elections. But I still believe that our president will understand that his time is over. People don't want him anymore. Thanks for watching Universal Information and Entertainment TV. Please like and subscribe our channel for more updated videos, news, information and entertainment. See you in next video. Stay tuned.